Good morning and welcome to today's lesson. Our lesson today is about Simeon and Anna. Who are they? You're making them up, aren't you? Not really. They're in the Bible. I've never heard of them. Were they Jesus' disciples? No. They knew that Jesus was the King and Saviour when he was only a baby. Wait, how did they know that? Oh, Alright, the shepherds told them. No. It must have been the wise men. No. Is it for animals in the stable? No. Who then? Patience, people, patience. I'll tell you right after this. your Bible, notebook, and pen, but if not, we're going to give you 30 seconds to go get them. Jesus and I will be waiting, so your 30 seconds starts now. Go! Let's begin. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2 and we'll be reading from verse 22 through to verse 39. Now let me give you the backstory before we start reading this. Now remember Christmas is when we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. So this story is between Christmas, celebration of his birth, and Easter, the celebration of his resurrection. Okay, so at this point, Jesus was still a baby. Now, according to the Jewish law, when you had a, a baby, a son, you had to take him to the temple. Now, this is what Mary and Joseph did. See, they obeyed the law. They brought with them either doves or young pigeons. It doesn't say. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consul consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. Okay, so this is one man who used to pray to God. The Holy Spirit was on him. In those days, the Holy Spirit was on people, not everybody. But in these days, when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit is in you, not on you. Okay, so Simeon was waiting and he had been waiting for a long time for the Savior. 
because God had promised that he would bring a savior to the world, okay? And people had waited and waited and waited. They had lived their lives, they had died. So Simeon was one of those, he was an old man. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So that meant that he had faith to believe God. He believed what God had told him that he was not going to die. It's the same thing like when I read the Bible and God promises me something like healing, I believe him. And so it's having faith. That's what's called having faith, believing what God says. This one day he was moved by the Spirit. This is verse 27. He was moved by, by the Spirit and he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. So he saw the baby and the Holy Spirit told him that's the salvation, that's the Savior. And so he held the baby and he said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. And what that means is, now I may die in peace because I have seen here, verse 30 says, for my eyes have seen your salvation. So he was so grateful and he praised God. And Simeon blessed them. Now there was also a prophet, Anna, she was very old now she was 84 at this point it says so later on she never left the temple but worshipped night and day so she was always in the temple having a great relationship with god uh, fasting and praying um, and verse 39 coming up to them at that very moment so you've got Simeon here holding the baby she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem now remember she was a prophet and a prophet is somebody who hears from God and tells people about it so here she was a prophet telling people about Jesus doing her job as most prophets do that Jesus had come for a purpose he wasn't just here just to breathe and eat and, and grow up. No, he was here to save the people, to die and, and redeem us, okay? Now, you as well, you are here for a purpose. You're not just here to eat and breathe and take up space. And that's one thing you ought to ask God about. You know, what am I here for? Because I've also asked God about why I am here. And I think part of the reason why I'm here is to teach you the word of God. So I'm also doing my job. So your assignment should be to ask God why you're here. And then once you hear what you're supposed to be doing, go ahead and do it. Okay, get your notebook and pen ready. I want you to write down a few notes. Okay, note number one. Just the same way that the Holy Spirit revealed to Simeon that Jesus was a savior, the Holy Spirit can reveal to you something about your life, something that is going to help you in your life. You have to rely on the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you. Okay, that's note number one. Okay, note number two. Simeon and Anna had been waiting for a long time to see the salvation of God, who was Jesus. And just the same way God has made promises to us in the Bible, sometimes they may take a long time to come, but you need to have faith and trust and confidence to believe God that what he says he will do, just like he did with Anna and Simeon. Okay, so note number three. Now Jesus was born for a purpose. He was here for a reason. The same thing with you, you are born but you're here for a reason. Now, to find out the reason or the purpose for your existence now, ask God about it because he created you and he knows why you are here. Note number four is that God is gonna do what he says. He's got the power to do what he says and he will do it. All we have to do is just believe it. Now it's time for a quiz. Okay. Let's see how much you remember. Try to answer these questions. Question number one. What do we celebrate during Christmas? And the answer is the birth of Jesus. Question number two. What do we celebrate during Easter? 
And the answer is the death and resurrection of Jesus. Question number three, who was Anna? And the answer is Anna was a prophetess. Question number four, what does a prophet or a prophetess do? And the answer, they hear from God and tell others what God says. Question number five, how did Simeon know who Jesus was? And the answer, the Holy Spirit revealed it to him. Question number six, what did Mary and Joseph take with them to the temple? And the answer could be a pair of doves or two young pigeons. And finally, question number seven, how long had Simeon and Anna been waiting to see God's salvation? And the answer is long, long, long time for the Savior to come. That completes our quiz. Well done. The memory verse for this week is Luke 2 verse 30, which says, my eyes have seen your salvation. Okay, we'll do it again, but we'll do it louder. My eyes have seen your salvation. Did I scare you? Okay, we'll do it quietly this time. My eyes have seen your salvation. Okay, all together again. My eyes have seen your salvation. Okay, and that is Luke 2 verse 30. My eyes have seen your salvation. We're now going to show you a picture that shows two images as one. Okay, let's load it up. Right, what do you see? I see a duck. No, it's a rabbit. Drum roll, please. It's both. So, I'll show you another image. What do you see now? People by the water. Jesus' face. Jesus with a star shining on him. You're all right. Just like the day when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus into the temple, some people in the temple only saw a baby. But Simeon and Anna, they saw the Savior. If you recognize Jesus as the Savior and would like to invite him into your heart so that you can become part of the family of God, which is exciting, you can follow Maureen who will lead you into prayer. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. I believe he died to save me. I believe he died to save me. I believe he rose again. I believe he rose again. I now ask Jesus to come into my heart. I now ask Jesus to come into my heart. As my Lord and Saviour. As my Lord and Saviour. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. And for making me your child. And for making me your child. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have just said the prayer, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Now you have Jesus in your heart and he loves you so much, he will never leave you. Now go right ahead and tell somebody about this wonderful decision you have made. And don't forget to read your Bible and do what it says. Now we're going to summarize today's lesson with a video by Crossroads Kids Club. God's story, Anna and Simeon. So part of God's story is about Anna and Simeon, and it goes like this. For hundreds and hundreds of years, God had been promising his family, the Israelites, a rescuer and king. He told them that this rescuer would come as a baby and would be his very own son. People waited a long, long, long time for the Savior to come. Lots waited their whole lives. Well, when Jesus was finally born, there was a man living in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was especially excited for God's promised king because he loved God and followed him with his whole heart. He even got to talk to God through the Holy Spirit. Nowadays, 
anybody who follows Jesus gets to talk to the Holy Spirit anytime. But before Jesus was born, the Holy Spirit only talked to some people, and Simeon was one of them. Anyway, one of the things the Holy Spirit told Simeon was that the baby king would be born while Simeon was still alive. Since God had been promising the rescuer for hundreds of years, this was a big deal. Simeon would actually get to meet God's rescuer. He just didn't know when. On the night of Jesus' birth, angels appeared to shepherds and announced Jesus' arrival. They excitedly ran out, telling everyone they knew. But remember, there weren't phones or internet back then, so not everyone knew that Jesus had been born, including Simeon. A little while after Jesus' birth, the Holy Spirit told Simeon to go to the temple. He may not have known why, but he obeyed anyway. Good thing he did, because while Simeon was at the temple, Mary and Joseph brought their new baby Jesus to the temple too, to dedicate him to God. As soon as Simeon saw Mary and Joseph with Jesus, he knew who Jesus was. We don't know exactly how he knew, but he did. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and said, Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace. That is what you promised. With my own eyes, I have seen what you have done to save your people. See, Simeon was getting pretty old, and meeting Jesus was the one thing he wanted in his life. Now that the rescuer was here, he was ready to die in peace. There was someone else in the temple that day, a woman named Anna. For many years, she had stayed at the temple day and night, worshiping God through fasting and prayer and talking to God through the Holy Spirit like Simeon. The Bible doesn't tell us exactly how long she'd been there, but by this time, she was 84 years old. She knew God well, and like Simeon, she had been waiting for the king God had promised. Sure enough, Anna came by just as Simeon was talking to Mary and Joseph. Immediately, she praised God. The king was finally here, just as God promised. When Simeon and Anna met Jesus, they were overcome with joy. The Bible tells us that faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Simeon and Anna were sure that God had promised to send a rescuer. They were sure he was coming. And when they saw Jesus, they were sure the rescuer had arrived. All because they had faith that God keeps his promises. And that's the story of Anna and Simeon. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God promised a rescuer. People waited. Simeon waited a long time. He loved God. God said he'd meet Jesus. Simeon met Jesus. Meeting Jesus was all he had wanted. Anna loved God too. She was waiting for a rescuer. She met Jesus. Simeon and Anna had faith. God kept his promise. And that's a part of God's story. Next week, we will learn more about Jesus. Don't forget to read your Bible and write down whatever God tells you in your notebook. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.